This episode of the Cascadian Beer Podcast has been made possible by the BC Ale Trail. Arrive thirsty, leave inspired at bcaletrail.ca. A question to ask yourself when planning to open a brewery in a small town should be, is the community ready for me? Welcome to the Cascadian Beer Podcast. My name's Aaron and I'm a Cascadian. I have a background in radio and television broadcasting. I'm a music producer and I have a passion for beer. I don't consider myself an expert in beer by any means, but I do enjoy and respect the craft and the passion of these brewmasters. I want to learn from these pioneers and what sets them apart from the rest and why they choose to call Cascadia their home. Cascadia is a bioregion in the Pacific Northwest on the North American continent. It is made up of the U.S. states of Washington and Oregon as well as the Canadian province of British Columbia. In this podcast series, I profile the unique breweries of Cascadia, a region that has a strong presence on the international beer scene. Along the Sea to Sky Highway in British Columbia is the community of Squamish. Known as the recreational capital of Canada, this small town is home to a brewery that embraces that spirit to its core. I sat down with two of the co-founders of Backcountry Brewing. My name is John Fallensby. I am uh, one of the co-founders of Backcountry and also the head brewer here. And I am Ben Reeder, marketing manager and co-founder as well. And we are in beautiful Squamish, especially on a day like today. And you guys are getting relatively busy because at the day of taping, summer is on its way. Uh, so how many summers is this now for you guys? And when did you open? I guess it'll be summer number two. Uh, we opened officially last year on April 1st. Um, so we are kind of just just over being open for a year now. And um, yeah, I mean, we've already noticed even over last year, I mean, the weather obviously helps, but uh, we're, you know, we're doing pretty well year over year. So it's uh, things are, the awareness of backcountry is increasing and it's, we're seeing in the tap room for sure. Mm -hmm. So uh, my favorite question to ask John is uh, how did beer find you? Uh, Beer found me basically through my kind of extended family. My wife is English. I went back to live in the UK for about a year. While I was there, uh, we spent time with her family and her father and brother are real ale kind of geeks, I guess, for lack of a better word. They're willing to travel, you know, an hour to the the right pub that serves the beer in the right way with the right beer and all those things. So I kind of tagged along on a few of those journeys just to go have a few pints. And I really fell in love with cask beer in the UK. It was so easy to drink, so flavorful, and it served warm, which was kind of like unlike anything I'd ever seen. Also, the contributing factor of kind of the the aesthetic of the English pub and the feel of that, that kind of whole psychosomatic effect of drinking beer in the right spot definitely had it had its impact as well. But that pretty much is what influenced me to try and come back and start homebrewing. I'd kind of dabbled in college. Like I guess actually my roommates had dabbled in college with homebrewing. So I kind of knew it was a thing. And so when I came back from living in the UK, I tried my hand at making or reproducing that cask beer, that English beer. And that's kind of how I got started in beer. Right. And Ben, how did beer find you? Well, being a lover of beer for many years, uh, I decided to get into growing hops. So it all started there on uh, Maple Bay Hop Farm. Started with some rhizome, planted uh, 8,000 of them in the ground and learned how to grow them as they came up. That's when the uh, brewery idea came and uh, I met John and Mark and it all came together shortly after that. Yeah, so kind of came from the ground up. Right. And uh, John, you were saying like, you know, drinking beer in the right place at the right time. Was Squamish always the location or was were there other locations in mind of where your, the brewery was going to be opening at? Well, initially we were looking in Vancouver um, and we did so for God, well over a year and a half, I would say closer to two years, probably without any success. We had a, we had a bunch of different potential spaces that we looked at um, all of which didn't work out for one reason or another. Because we weren't having success in Vancouver, we started looking elsewhere. We we're looking outside of Vancouver. I was currently living in Squamish and commuting to work at Steamworks, where, where I was working at the time when we were planning. There was actually perfect available warehouse space in Squamish. And so that ended up being the place we ended up locating. So Ben, what were some of the challenges to this location or were there any? Well, working out a lease isn't always easy. Yeah, <laughs> That was fun. Uh, we were on pins and needles for a while because I think after all of us came up here and just 
walked into the space, it was an especially after seeing what was available elsewhere, uh, it just seemed like such a perfect space. So I think we all knew we wanted to be here right away. Mm -hmm. And there's a little discussion about whether Squamish could take what we wanted to offer and whether it was ready for that and big enough. And we crunched as many numbers as we could and it seemed like it was going to be all right. And uh, well, we were happily found that uh, the locals took to us. Did you have like beers in mind before you opened? Like what did you want to set out and be unique or was there uh, just, you know, we need to get the core lineup done and then get the door open to the locals? Uh, yeah. I mean, there's like, I like a whole lot of different beer styles. So I didn't have any, we were, I knew from the beginning that we were going to be somewhat limited in, on space. So we were trying to just, you know, budget wise, we're trying to con, you know limit our, our warehouse footprint to, to be as small as possible to make opening a brewery, which is just excessively expensive mm -hmm. feasible. And so, I've always, I've always had uh, the intention of having a barrel aging program, both for like mixed fermentation, sour, and clean beer as well. That is, isn't something that we've had a chance to kind of um, take on yet, just because of our space limitations. But that will soon be changing. But initially, yeah, it was more of just like kind of making our favorite clean beer styles, which are um, we love IPA, we love hobby beers in here. So IPAs, pale ales, and variations on the such. Um, we make kettle sours in here as well. Whenever we have the space to tie up the kettle for a couple of days, we're also big fans of uh, stouts and porters, uh, things along those lines. And then I'm also a huge fan of lagers. Um, we have a, a core pilsner that we make all the time, and then we also have rotational lagers that we make generally just for the tap room, just to keep our, our yeast uh, healthy and in rotation. Uh, and we've made all kinds of different stuff, anything from Martins to Vienna Lager to Hellas to uh, anything kind of strikes her fancy at the time, but uh, also a, a big stylistic fan of that particular genre. Right. And uh, Ben, how was opening day for you guys? Opening day was uh, a big rush. I think we had worked really hard in advance of opening. And I think we, we put off opening a couple weeks just to make sure we were really ready mm -hmm. and uh, had a few more beers. And uh, we had soft opening for two days of soft opening in our beer club. And that was just great because we had some forgiving customers that were willing to work with us and served up a whole lot of food and a whole lot of beer and worked 18 hours a day for the next many weeks, filling in for all the things we didn't forecast for, like a someone to clean up after us <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and finding a dishwasher in this town. So, um, yeah, it was exhilarating and uh, a lot of family and friends came by and uh, just, uh, you know, a few tears even. All right. Did you guys run out of beer? Uh, yeah. I mean, we we didn't really forecast how popular the tasting room was going to be. Coming to Squamish, like it was definitely there was an, there was this X factor of is the town going to really come out to support us? How much beer are we going to sell in Squamish, and how much beer are we going to sell elsewhere? Luckily for us, the timing of when we opened our brewery was very fortuitous. It was the new gondola had just gone in. Obviously the Vancouver real estate market is going crazy, which is causing people to move to Squamish. The demographic in Squamish is changing. So, um, we were definitely seeing like a, a more kind of craft beer centric demographic in Squamish and all those things kind of happening at the same time really kind of helped to make the tap room a success. Um, and obviously like the quality of what we're producing in there, it, it has helped that a lot as well. Like mm -hmm. the beer and the pizza and our staff are all incredible. Mm -hmm. uh, and all those things kind of came together to make a really successful tap room way more so than we ever kind of anticipated. Mm -hmm. So you talked about beer elsewhere. Uh, so you guys have a packaging line, correct? We do. Yeah. So we have a, we've got a cask, uh, can line. So we chose cans just because it, um, it really goes along with kind of like our, our ethos here, being able to take our beer into, into the back country and enjoy it out there. Mm -hmm. it's, it's super way, way more portable for a hike. Yeah, totally. And also it's just, it's, you know, it's kind of, it's the craft beer packaging format of the future. So it's, it made a lot of sense for us to go with the canning line. Up until this point, we haven't had a ton of excess volume because the, the tap room eats up a lot of volume and then local accounts, which is kind of where we want to serve first. Those also eat up a fair bit. Mm -hmm. um, but this summer, uh, you'll definitely start to see backcountry beer in a lot more places. Mm -hmm. uh, we've well, got new you tanks. You guys have a fairly large presence in Vancouver as it is right now. So Yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully we'll have even more presence uh, going forward. We should have a lot like this year, probably just this spring, actually, we've been putting out a lot more cans, a lot more different cans, because up until this point, it was really just our three core beers, our Ridge Runner, our uh, Trail Breaker and our Widowmaker. But uh, going forward, we we're pretty much having can can releases every week or two, really more beer for sure in the city. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's going to be a busy summer ahead. 
I just want to take a moment to thank the sponsor of this episode, the BC Ale Trail. And there's tons of breweries popping up all over in large communities and small communities in BC. And the BC Ale Trail has a great comprehensive list of all these on their website at bcaletrail.ca. On the website, you will find recommended itineraries for each region of the province, a comprehensive list of every craft brewery in BC, a calendar of beer events, and a blog with lots of great stories. And the regional ill trails include local pubs, breweries, and restaurants, along with other activities the area has to offer. And there's many in Squamish. So whether you're planning a weekend trip or being a tourist in your own backyard, why not let the BC Ale Trail guide you to your next beer adventure? Arrive thirsty, leave inspired at bcaletrail.ca. All right, let's jump back into the conversation with Backcountry Brewing. We've talked about some of the activities at Squamish. So if somebody was to come here and visit you guys uh, to check out your tap room, what are some of the other activities that they could do in the Squamish area? Well, right next to us is the air house. So you can drop your kids off at the trampoline center. And there's even a half pipe for those who want to get into that and then walk down to the brewery. That's a good close one. There's the uh, Sea to Sky Gondola, which is a huge hit here. Take the gondola ride up over the over the Chief, go for a short hike, have some beer on the patio up there. One of the best patios in BC. And uh, the Rope Runner uh, just opened up, which is a place for sort of an adventure walk up on a rope ladder complex, if you will, and uh, good for kids and uh, adults as well. There's tons of river rafting and kayaking options here and a lot of stand-up paddle boarding going on. And then, of course, the uh, kite boarding is huge here at the Spit. That's uh, the Kite Clash Canadian Championships are coming up uh, June 7th, I believe, that we're going to be serving beers as well there. Uh, that's a good one. John, what do you got? Uh, I mean, like they call it the recreation capital of Canada for a reason. I mean, there's pretty much unlimited things that you can do in Squamish from like Ben's head hiking and all those things. Mountain biking is huge here. Yep. Rock climbing is huge here. Um, those are probably the two biggest, most popular summertime activities. But like you said, there's river rafting, kayaking, stand up paddle boarding, the list goes on. And, and you on. guys are very easy to get to from all those provincial parks and right along. Yeah. The yeah. We're like nicely centrally located geographically in town. So we're, uh, you know, we're, we're bikeable from just about everywhere in Squamish. All right, cool. And, uh, what's the size of your tasting room? Uh, well, it's 50 seats. You know, it fills up pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if you're coming on the weekend, you make sure you get here early for sure. Right. And then uh, what are uh, some of your food offerings there that you have? Those are changing all the time, but our main food offerings are our pizza um, and we do appies and salads, but we just hired a brand new chef named Artie from Whistler. He is putting out a whole bunch of amazing seasonal food. Um, it pretty much, they kind of just started releasing them last week. So in addition to the pizzas and salads that we do, we now have this amazing Italian sub. Um, we have uh, new pasta options that are available. He does a strong boy, which is amazing. Arancini balls. Um, charcuterie plate, um, and the list goes on. Right. But, um, yeah. And he's going to have those rotating all summer, but Ben's probably the, I think you just named them all. <laughs> you can, I think you guys just ate all of those in a row. Did you not? On, yeah. On Sunday. I mean, I'm, I'm hungry. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. We were looking to try them all this past Sunday and they were amazing. So, yeah. Jeez. So yeah, we're also, we also just changed our hours. So we are now open for lunch seven days a week and at noon and brunch on weekends for 11 o'clock. So that's, mm -hmm. we've got a whole new lunch menu and a lot of the pizzas just got revamped. We've got a buffalo chicken pizza coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, that's out. We've got the Wake and Bacon 3.0 that just came out as well. Right. That pizza's insane. It's so, so good. <laughs> right. And uh, if somebody couldn't come to Squamish for whatever reason, what is the reach of your distribution of your beer? Well, the furthest you can get our beer is probably Harrison Hot Springs <laughs> area. We've got a Morgan's Bistro out there. We've got it all over Whistler and Pemberton, uh, all through Vancouver, Maple Ridge, and then... Uh, sometimes we get up to Penticton as well. We've chosen Penticton as a spot for us to get some beer too. So uh, just mostly lower mainland. And who's inspiring you guys in BC in terms of some other breweries that are doing their thing? I mean, there's like, there's a lot. There's like, and there's so many opening all the time. It's, it's, it's like almost impossible to keep track. Yep. But as far as like, just off the top of my head, we're always excited to try beers from, from uh, Four Winds, uh, from Twin Sales. The new brewery in North Van called Beer. They're making they're making awesome IPAs right now. Always been a fan of Yellow Dog. Lupolo makes great beer. Strange Fellows, Brass Neck. Those are kind of like the the ones that are coming to mind immediately. But there's so there's so many more that are making amazing stuff all the time. Mm -hmm. it's, I wish and it's the small communities now that are really popping up. Like um, Souk on the Islands got a couple now, and like there's that new place in Duncan, and then like Pan Dicton's blowing up too, right? So yeah, it's so hard. Like I said, it's so hard to keep track of them all, and it's like we. 
unfortunately in Squamish, like because we're a bit of a not isolated community, but we're not like in Vancouver, we don't get access to all the these new breweries beer oftentimes. Yeah. So it's hard to kind of keep track of what's going on. But I definitely look forward to trying them all because they mm-hmm. they're they're the new brewery pretty much opening every week. So it's pretty exciting. Yeah. So what are some of the logistical issues then of being in Squamish? Logistical issues for us, we we use uh, distributors in Vancouver, so they come and pick up our beer and we take it to their warehouse in Vancouver and deliver mm-hmm. it for us. So we we're about to change that and consider consider doing a bunch of that ourselves. So now we're putting the logistical issues on ourselves, which is, that's actually that meeting starting at two if you want to join us. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and if somebody was wanting to go down this path themselves, opening up their own brewery, what'd be some advice that you could give them? I don't know. There's, there's actually, a, I don't know. There's a lot of advice. <laughs> it depends on um, kind of where you're coming from, I guess. Yep. What level of knowledge and expertise you're coming into the game with. I would say it, it's a lot more expensive than you probably, than you probably imagine. And it's an exceptional amount of work. Mm-hmm. So luckily for us, we have, there's five partners that are involved in this project and three of them are operational here and going, you know, during the startup startup phase when we were all planning and raising cap money to, to start the brewery, having five people, having those five resources to both plan and raise money were kind of pivotal <laughs> to us being successful and getting this brewery off the ground. It's a lot of work. For sure, it was adding more, way more work than any of us ever anticipated. Um, but obviously, it's it's panned out. I mean, obviously, really worth it for us. But uh, I would just say that, like, if you're getting into it, make sure you have some some industry experience, um, or you hire some people that have great industry experience. Find some wealthy benefactors that are, uh, or make sure that you are, so that you have enough money to to get mm-hmm. this thing off the ground. Because it's depending on what what you're looking at as far as like opening, whether you're looking for a to open a small kind of brass neck style brewery or, or something more like what we've done with packaging and that, and that kind of thing with a, ta- a bigger tap room, you're looking at well over a million bucks yeah. to do it right. So it's, it's definitely no small, no small feat for sure. And uh, for the home brewer out there, what would be a uh, good tip to make better beer? Uh, the, the, the best thing you can do to make better beer is to brew more often and drink a lot of beer, not in volume, obviously, but uh, drink a lot of different types of beer. Expose yourself to as many different types of beer as you can. Go like there's amazing beer in BC, but, you know, branch out and try a lot of different stuff. That's the best thing you can do is, is try beer and brew beer more often and be honest with yourself and and hold yourself. Your, the beers that you're making up to what you're trying and, and be honest about how good your beer is. That's that's the best way to, to improve. Well, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you so much to Ben and John for their time. It is beautiful up there and the tasting room is fantastic. You need to go check them out. That's Backcountry Brewing in Squamish, BC. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast and thanks again to the BC Ale Trail for making this episode possible. Visit them at bcaletrail.ca. If you like this podcast series or if this is the first time here and you enjoyed it, why not take a moment to leave us a review wherever you listen to this podcast. It really helps get this podcast series into as many ears as possible. You can also follow us on social media by going to Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Cascadian Beer. We're on Twitter at Cascadian Beer and on Instagram at Cascadian Beer Podcast. For more information and more episodes from this podcast series, head to the website at Cascadian.beer. My name's Aaron, and thank you so much for listening. Really appreciate your time. And until next time, remember, support your local.